Welcome back to ESPR Boxing's YouTube channel. Delighted, as always, to be joined by Owen McKendry. We have just seen the ceremonial way in, I suppose, for Canelo Alvarez versus Jaime Munguia ahead of the undisputed super middleweight title fight tomorrow night. Um, Owen, as I always kind of get frustrated with these ceremonial weigh-ins because you, there's not as much to talk about when we when we, when we catch up afterwards, is there? Um, to start off with, both fighters have made weight or made weight a few hours ago. Canelo Alvarez over a pound in this limit at 166.8 and Hyman Gear at 167.4. Worth noting, both these guys have both these guys have kind of moved up the weight divisions in their in their careers. Um both have kind of kind of had had success at other 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 weight divisions as well. Um first thing I will start on, Owen, what do you make of kind of Canelo? coming in over a pound over. I think that's the most notable thing that's happened here. Obviously in fantastic shape, but yeah, your your thoughts on that, please. Um, it's one of them. He's been a, if you bar the blemish of the, the failed drugs test, he's been a, a consumer professional in terms of making weight, how good he looks on the scales. So it, it's probably just a fact of, you know, he floats up and down the weights. Um, I don't think there's necessarily too much to read into it. Possibly could have been walking around heavier, preparing to try and get the Bivol rematch. Um, so it, when he's putting down, slightly miscalculated, slightly misjudged. But, but I don't think there's too much to read into that. Um, you know, if he was quite a bit under or if he was quite a bit over, then you'd be saying sort of, is he right for the weight at this stage of his career? But I think maybe reading into it too much with the potentially looking to walk around heavier, better preparation for, for Bivol once this is out of the way, but it's where the, the money fight is for him. So yeah, I don't, I don't think there's too much in that personally. Yeah, no, I agree. It's important. Look, we are, we are not talking about a lot of weight here. It's the sort of weight kind of, if you want to lose a quick half a pound um, and you, and you're kind of not, not in a position where you're already rehydrated, you can lose that sort of weight just by having a walk basically. Um, so yeah, it is what it is. Look, at the end of the day, both fighters have made weight and that is that. Um, but we don't know what the fighters look like when they actually made weight. So it's just a bit frustrating. Can't talk about, does someone look kind of dry at the weight? Does someone look like they've really struggled? Um, but we both saw them kind of have a final face-off for one final time ahead of tomorrow night. Anything you spotted there, Owen? Both fighters obviously looked in fantastic shape. Um, what did you make of it all? Um, yeah, it's, it's a weird one. Like you, you think a million and one questions almost when you think, why have they moved the way in time? Um, why is it an hour earlier? Why is it the ceremonial style? Why has none of this really been put out in comms? Why does no one really know it's going to happen? You know, is there underlying reasons? Um, was Canelo struggling? It, it, it adds a lot of sort of potential questions, but one's really where you're never going to get the answer to them, um, which is really annoying. Um, I think both fighters look good. They both look strong. Um, they're obviously both going to be massive um, on the night because they're both going to rehydrate and they're both going to look huge and way, way over the limit um, when they're in the ring. But I think the most needle I've seen in any of this build-up is between Canelo and De La Hoya. Um, don't think there was anything in particular... To, to point out any animosity really between the two. I think it's both being Mexican, you know, the, the weekend of the fight, probably high, high respect between the two. And I, I really do think Canelo knows how dangerous Jaime Munguia can be. So I think he, he's coming into this sort of tuned in, um, no messing about and, and ready for fight night. So unfortunately, if we'd seen the full thing, um, there might have been a few more things to pick out, but that's boxing. Yeah, for sure. I think... I think one thing, one other factor was there was no there was no kind of back and forth between Canelo and Oscar De La Hoya today, as there was the press conference. Um, it would be interesting to know why not if Canelo didn't want to, or if Oscar De La Hoya. I don't know if you saw he um wore a um that wore a t shirt saying that said eat more meat on the t shirt, so he's clearly still not letting things go and want wants to get in Canelo's head, but. From what we saw, Canelo's not risen to it. I think if you're Canelo, you're, you're not focused. You're not fighting Oscar De La Hoya. You're focused on Mingir, and it's important to focus to, fo to focus on that. He's got a live a live opponent in front of him. Um, what have you thought about the Canelo and Oscar De La Hoya stuff? Oh, and it's a relationship that's clearly gone very sour, but it's mm. also kind of 
potentially mind games as well. I mean, it's I think it's some might say it's kind of worked in Munguia de la Hoya's favour because Canelo might be distracted. Some people might say Canelo's now more kind of motivated to win the fight and rub it into Ho D D D de la Hoya's face. What have you what have you made of all of it? Um, it's surprising, really, because I think De La Hoya is obviously one of the most famous names in the sport, um, great career. But it, it seems to me like it takes a lot of things to heart. You know, the the beef with Eddie Hearn, um, now he's picking it with Canelo. It, it baffles me a bit because he's not exactly a name where he needs to try and stay relevant. All you have to do is mention Oscar De La Hoya and people know who he is. Yeah. It'll always be relevant in the sport. So it does baffle me a little bit um, because as far as he takes it, the the sort of digs and the, and the jibs he was making towards Canelo, it was almost like he was trying to get into his head on behalf of Munguia, but it was almost like he was trying to get one over and one up, but he's not the one fighting. Um, so I do think he has sort of a, maybe a bit of a main character syndrome. Um, he likes the, the cameras and the lights and everyone to be talking about Oscar De La Hoya rather than the fight. Um, which is a shame, really, because I think the media we've seen for this fight hasn't been good enough. Um, I think it's a great fight. Stylistically, I think it's a great fight. Two Mexicans, two champions. It's a huge, huge fight. And I think the build-up to it's been quite flat until De La Hoya decided to bring up the meat and the cheating, which he, he seems to be holding on to. But yeah, to me, it just seems De La Hoya wants to be the star of the show. Um and maybe a bit of jealousy in terms of, you know, the way we've seen it with Eddie Hearn, the way Eddie Hearn is as a promoter, his stature as a promoter, the relationship he has with his fighters, with the media. Um, there may be an element of that in there. But yeah, I just think it's a case of look at me from Oscar De La Hoya and far too often, to be honest. Yeah, no, it's been it's been an interesting fight week and um, we'll see what happens kind of post-fight tomorrow night when they're all kind of in the, in, in the ring together. Um we will end it now, Owen. Um, please do check out our final predictions video. It's Nal and Thomas or on, on, on it this week. Um, it is going, yeah, it is, is going live at 3 p.m. UK time. Um, please do uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel, watch the rest of our Canelo Mungia content. Um, Owen, I'll leave, well, I'll do it as well, but if you can let us know what your what your final prediction is ahead of tomorrow night, what's what's going to happen? As part of uh, my betting tip show prediction um, and my price, I found I'm sticking with that. I think Canelo is going to win on points. I don't think it's going to be a shutout um, and it might be a shock to a few, but I think Munguia might drop him along the way. Um, you know, at this stage of Canelo's career, he's been in a lot of fights. He's been in some tough fights, especially the Bivol one, um, up and down the weights. And I, I think we could see fireworks. Um, it's two Mexicans, it's Mexican pride. It's almost like whoever wins this is the man in Mexico. So I think we could see a bit of a war, some fireworks. Um, as me and Greg said, when our viewers check out the betting tips show as well, um, I think Greg, he alluded to Canelo is going to catch Munguia with shots he might not have seen before. But I think we're just going to see some explosiveness for Munguia. He's going to catch him and then I think Canelo will, will see it out. Um, so yeah, Canelo on points, but I think he faces some trouble along the way. Yeah, I'll um, I'll join you and go for Canelo on points. But look, it's going to be a fantastic fight, and it what it shouldn't be is I don't think it's going to be a straightforward, easy fight for Canelo Munguia. Um, yeah, he's I think he's is a very good opponent. I just think Munguia we've not he's not had a massive taste for the high elite level so far, and it could be it's a big step up to to fight Canelo Alvarez. But so, yeah, it will be an interesting fight to see where Canelo is in his career and how long he's got left at the top. Owen, good to speak to you. Um, enjoy the fight and I will speak to you again very soon. Pleasure as always, mate.